is, as we all know, the GOAT was speaking this weekend at his annual meeting he holds each and every year. Packs the stadium, but this year they did it at a stadium, but there was nobody there, okay? So all the talk is around Warren Buffett and the fact that Berkshire has not really been buying any stocks and the fact that they have $137 billion, with a B, dollars in cash and cash equivalents and short-term investments on their balance sheet now. And this is just in the past eight years. Listen to this. They've gone from $37 billion to $137 billion in eight years. That's incredible. That's $100 billion in cash added in just eight years to their balance sheet. It's the sickest thing I've ever seen. I mean, you talk about flexes of the century. This is beyond the biggest flex of the century, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do something exciting for today's video, okay? Let's say Warren Buffett wanted to just spend $30, $30 billion off that balance sheet, and he wanted to buy some stocks here today, okay? I'll give you five stocks to buy for Warren Buffett, okay? In my opinion, if he says, you know what, I'm, I'm going to keep $107 billion on the balance sheet in cash, but I want to go spend $30 billion. And who knows, Warren Buffett might actually see this video. He's mentioned several times, uh, you know, the other day on Saturday when he was basically having that whole conference, he mentioned he was watching YouTube videos multiple times. Who knows? Maybe this video is going to show up on it or is recommended. He's going to go ahead and watch it, okay? Who knows? You never really know, okay? I heard him talk about YouTube views. I think he's starting to get into YouTube. Let's just put it that way, guys. So basically, $6 billion need to go in each of these stocks. So basically, the stocks we're going to be looking at here are companies with a $100 billion plus dollar market cap because you can't just put $6 billion in any stock out there, okay? Keep in mind, most stocks in the stock market don't even have a $6 billion market cap. So in order to put $6 billion in a stock. You need a stock that has huge market cap and a stock that has heavy volume basically each and every trading day. So, so basically they could put the $6 billion in over let's say the next month or so and they wouldn't have to worry about making the stock price go up a bunch or something like that, okay? And this is basically assuming he has to buy these stocks now. Not like, oh, let's wait a few months or let's wait a year or two until maybe there's another stock market collapse or maybe there's a stock market correction. This is assuming he has to buy these stocks now and not wait for the stock market to dip, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. As always, I hope you enjoy me kind of getting in these stocks. Let me know if you guys think these are stocks to buy now or if you just think they're like stocks to watch. I would love to hear from you guys as always in that comment section. Let's get a whole bunch of smashing the thumbs up button going, okay? So we're talking about investing $30 billion of Buffett's money. So we need to hit 30 billion thumbs up on this video. I, I don't think it's ever been done in YouTube history. I think we can do it on this video, okay? All I ask for is 30 billion thumbs up and that's how you can pay me for this video. Let's get into this, guys, okay? First stock up here of these five is a stock named Google McDougal. This is not a company that Warren Buffett is invested in at the moment. And I think most of these companies we're going to mention here are actually companies that Buffett has no money in, okay? Google McDougal would certainly fit that. First stock up here, put $6 billion in, in Google McDougal if I was you, Warren Buffett, okay? The stock right now, $1,326. And if you don't already know, Google McDougal, amazing business model. They own so many businesses, it's insane, okay? But their core main business is how Google actually makes the, the most of their revenues and most of their profits. Google search. Obviously, like if you know anything about Google, Google search, okay? It's used all over the world. It's the biggest search provider out there. It's their cash cow business. YouTube is starting to become their second biggest cash cow business. And basically, YouTube is essentially Google search, but in video format with also the entertainment aspect of like a Netflix or something like that, but it's ad supported. So YouTube, amazing business model, a business that they just could focus on growth and growth and growth. And YouTube has attracted more and more serious advertisers over the years. So if you're looking at uh, you know, the, the, the next huge opportunity for, for Google to really see their revenues and profits go up over the next five, 10 years, it's really going to be on the back of YouTube. Okay, They obviously own Android, which is the biggest operating software when it comes to smartphones in the entire world. They have massive cloud businesses. They have other businesses other than those, but those are the, those are the main drivers for Google overall. And what we can see if we look at an income statement of Google, this is why I think it would be a very good investment for somebody like Warren Buffett, incredible revenue growth from $110 billion back in 2017 to this past year, they do $161 billion in total revenue. Net income went from $12.6 billion back in 2017 to $34 billion dollars in 2019. Incredible, incredible revenue growth, incredible net income growth. And Buffett loves a company with a good balance sheet. And you want to talk about the king of balance sheets. Look at Google McDougal. 
$18.4 billion in cash, $101 billion in short-term investments, okay? Add up those and that's almost $120 billion in money they could get to tomorrow if they want it. On top of that, you got another $13 billion in equity and other investments, and they have less than $4 billion in long-term debt. Guys, this is a number one balance sheet in the world, okay? There's a lot of guys competing for that number one slot of the best balance sheet in the world. We got Apple, we obviously have the FB, we have Amazings on Microsoft, a lot of companies are gunning for that spot of the number one best balance sheet in the world. I'm giving it to Google McDougal. They have the most pristine balance sheet I've seen, the most beautiful balance sheet I've seen, uh, just an unbelievable, unbelievable balance sheet, okay? Now, if we look at Google's valuation, remember, it's not just about liking the business model and, and liking the revenue growth and net income growth and, and the balance sheet, it's also about the valuation. And we are paying a bit of a rich valuation for Google. Ford P right now is 31.65. Now, keep in mind, it would be a lot lower if we weren't in the Rony Rona situation. The Rony Rona situation is hurting advertising spending out there, right? Imagine your local restaurant. Why, if your business, if your restaurant's closed right now, you're an Italian restaurant, right? And your your, your Italian restaurant's closed right now, right now. Why the heck are you going to advertise on Google? You're not. It just doesn't make sense, okay? Because your place is closed anyway, so it's not like you're going to drive any business to it. So right now, a lot of advertisers are pulling back money. That hurts ad rates for a company like Google McDougal in the short term, okay? So it does look like we're paying a little bit of a rich valuation at the moment. We usually like it if we can pay something in the 20s, especially low 20s for Google McDougal. And if you can ever get Google McDougal under a 20 Ford P, that's when it's very, very attractive. So at the end of the day, Google McDougal, in my opinion, it's a little rich, but it's still money making the next five, 10 years. It's almost impossible for me to see Google stock not being higher five to 10 years from now than it is today, okay? I think it's you know fairly easy money for Buffett to make in this one. I think he could get his position built very quickly. $6 billion into Google stock is nothing. It's not gonna materially move Google stock price at all. And I think it would be a great, great decision for Warren Buffett if he put some money in Google McDougal, okay? Next one up here, stock number two of five is Alibaba Group. Group, okay, it's a company out of China, but they honestly do business all over the world. They're just known as a Chinese company. Okay, ticker symbol this one is Baba. Okay, hundred ninety-one dollar stock here today. He could easily put six billion in this one and wouldn't even move the stock price. Now, when it comes to Alibaba, incredible business. They're the leading provider of e-commerce in China and some other markets in the world. You guys might know them from AliExpress, Taobao, Tmall, as well as many other e-commerce platforms. It's an amazing company, 38% growth their core commerce business had in their latest quarter. That's incredible, okay? Cloud computing, if you guys wanna talk about a dark horse when it comes to cloud computing, watch out for Alibaba, not just in China, but around the world as they compete in the cloud business. Everybody talks about, obviously, Amazon, AWS, when it comes to cloud. Then a lot of people talk about Mr. Softy. A lot of people talk about Google McDougal and uh, you know a few other companies that are competing in the cloud space, but watch out for Alibaba. They're the company that's gonna sneak up on everybody. No one's talking about Ali, Alibaba's cloud business and it continues to grow massively with 62% revenue growth in the latest quarter. That is incredible, okay? And in terms of just their numbers in general, 38% revenue growth year over year. This, you know, that's incredible. Alibaba's a massive company already and to be growing like this is incredible, absolutely incredible. Net income growth year over year, 62%. Incredible non-gap net income growth of 56% for the BABA. Unreal numbers, but that is not even the best part. The best part is the fact that they're growing massively and you pay a super cheap valuation for this company. Ford P of 24 and a half, and that's assuming with the whole Rony Rona situation going on, right? That is obviously hurting China and hurting the whole worldwide economy right now. You know, you're talking about a pretty dang cheap valuation in regards to Alibaba with a company with massive growth. I mean, absolutely massive growth. You know, that and a pretty pretty strong moat around the business as well, which, you know, Buffett loves to talk about moat. That's cheap, guys. I'm gonna be completely honest. That is a pretty dang cheap for a company. You know, in this market, there aren't that many cheap stocks, but when you're talking about a company with this type of growth, trading at a 24 Ford P, 
It's actually cheap, okay? Now, one thing we gotta discuss, I think it's worth discussing, the fact that Alibaba is a Chinese company, and we've heard situations like what happened with Luck and Coffee, okay? A fraud investigation, and they're not the only company to be involved in this out of China. So I understand a lot of people are, are definitely worry about investing in a Chinese company, and I am too. And I could understand if Warren Buffett was looking at this and he's like, man, do I wanna put $6 billion into a Chinese company. But here's the thing, and here's where it might be a little bit different if you're thinking about it from Alibaba's perspective, okay? Alibaba, at the end of the day, it's the face of Chinese business to the world. So, meaning, essentially, the chances something would go awry at Alibaba, very, very slim. Because if they were ever in a situation like a Luck and Coffee was in or something like that, that would be devastating to China the country long term in terms of thinking about investing in China because this, this you know it's one thing if luck and coffee some random you know uh, wannabe Starbucks thing that just grew overnight is caught up in some type of fraud investigation it's a whole other if Alibaba ever w was trying to do anything accounting wise with their business they shouldn't have been doing something like that they're the face of Chinese business to the world so I think the odds of something going awry there very very low keep in mind who's the face of Chinese business to the world Jack Ma, okay? Jack Ma, obviously, you know, the, the biggest shareholder of Alibaba. So you're talking about the, the face of Chinese business, Alibaba. You're talking about the, the you know, this, I think he's the richest or second richest man out of China and really the face of Chinese business and Jack Ma, you know, he's he's our, he's our Jeff Bezos, you know, as Americans watching this, any of my Americans watching this, and I know half of you guys aren't Americans that are watching this, but to us Americans, you know, Jeff Bezos is our guy that we're just like, you know, uh, put out there as like our businessman to the world, right? We got a lot of other important figures. We have the Elon Musk, which is kind of our, like our, our face of kind of like our visionary side, right? You have Warren Buffett, who's kind of like the face of the investing side. You got other folks, but Jeff Bezos is really that guy is just a businessman. And Jack Ma is that guy for China. So if, if Alibaba went down, like it would just be, no, I just can't see it, okay? Joseph Tai is the second guy really at Alibaba. And he's been fully wrapped up in the company for a long, long time now. He's buying, you know, sports teams in America and stuff, okay? So the, just at the end of the day, the, the, the likelihood that Alibaba would ever be caught up into an LK situation, very, very low. It, it is always a possibility, as it is with American companies as well, or European companies, or any companies in general. I'm just saying like, the likelihood Baba would be caught up in that, pretty slim in my personal opinion, because the, the Chinese government, Oh boy, it would, it would, they would not treat anybody uh, too respectfully in that situation if anybody was caught up in that because that would that'd be devastating for China over the long term, okay? So at the end of the day, Baba is just a cheap company that has an incredible moat with a ton of growth and, uh, you know, it's hard for me not to see Mr. Buffett making a lot of money in Alibaba stock over time. And he could, e he could easily put $6 billion in that over the next, you know, few weeks or the next couple months and, you know, really not move the stock price because the market capitalization of the company is just so big. It's like a half a trillion dollar market capitalization company, okay? Amazing business. Uh, definitely one for him there, okay? Number three stock to buy for Warren Buffett, in my opinion. And first off, yes, I know he would never buy this stock. I 100% agree with that, okay? I understand, you know, I've been studying this guy for a long, long time. I know he wouldn't buy it, but in my opinion, it might serve him to buy this stock, okay? Tesla Mesa stock, okay? And stock number three of five. Let's be honest, he's not gonna buy Tesla stock. I think he should. I really think he should. And even at six, you know, 761, which is, you know, a, a long way from where the stock was at this time last year, you know, I still think he would make a lot of money over the next five, 10 years in the stock. And as somebody that's a long-term investor like Warren Buffett is, you know, Tesla's the ultimate long-term investing stock. It's really the stock you're thinking about over the next five, 10 years. And what are they doing in five to 10 years from now? And he could easily stuff six billion in this, probably not move the market capitalization much, okay? He, you know, I understand I have a cost basis of $227 on this, uh, and the stocks ran a lot from there. But at the end of the day, uh, I still think the company's cheap. And when you first look at the company, you see $144 billion market cap, so yeah, he could stuff six billion in it and it wouldn't move the stock much, okay? You see the Ford P of 166 and it looks expensive on face value, okay? Until you start doing a little digging into the numbers, okay? The total addressable market, that is what Tesla's going after when it comes to the amount of new vehicles sold, okay? The amount of new vehicles sold in 2019 worldwide 91 million, it's a total addressable market, okay? 
in my personal opinion, Tesla will be selling 10 million plus vehicles per year by 20. 30. Not 10 million in total vehicles they had sold over time. I'm talking 10 million per year. I think they're going to become that dominant that they're going to have significant market share around the world. And in every developed country out there, they are going to be the number one player. And I believe that is going to happen over the course of the next 10 years. I think even in five years from now, it's going to become pretty dang obvious that that is the way it's going to be. But in 10 years, I think, you know, unless all innovation stops at Tesla, uh, I think there's pretty high likelihood they will be there because they're way in front. And I'm talking years in front of their competition, if you want to call them their competition, years in front of the competition, and Tesla just keeps the pedal to the metal. And the thing with Tesla is they're expanding their lead. Their lead isn't going backwards. Their lead is going forwards because of the core of the company, okay? Tesla, this company only sold 367,000 cars in 2019. So imagine this for a moment. Remember, we, we looked at the PE and the Ford P looks so expensive at 166, right? Tesla in 2019 sold less than 400,000 cars. Tesla in 2029, in my opinion, will sell 10 million cars plus, okay? Let's assume I'm wrong on that. Let's assume I'm 2 million off. Let's assume they sell 8 million. Okay, 8 million would still be massive growth for the company. Heck, even if, even if I was dramatically wrong and they only did 4 million, which in my opinion, if, if Tesla was only selling 4 million cars 10 years from now, I would look at this as, uh, I, you know, it, it, near, I was, I was uh, too bullish. Let's just put it that way, okay? But even if they sold 4 million cars a year in 2029, there'd be a 10x plus increase in the amount of cars produced, okay? I, like I said, I think I'll be right on this. I think they'll be making about 10 million cars, if not more than 10 million cars per year in 2029 because they're just going to keep pedals to the metal, okay? No, it's not just the fact that they'll be selling a massive amount of cars. That's, that's exciting and that's one part, but the fact is on the backs of those cars, they're going to start making a lot of money, okay? Tesla's going to start a subscription model and this is already start, you're seeing the little seeds planted, but this is going to take off like crazy over the next five, 10 years, okay? Things like they're doing a, basically an over-the-air update for a faster car. Imagine if they rolled that out where instead of paying like $2,000 to make your Model 3 faster, imagine if they rolled out something like you pay 20 bucks a month and you get you know a much faster zero to 60 time or something like that. I think a lot of people go ahead and take that up. Maybe, maybe not everybody has 2,000 bucks to you know spend outright to make an upgrade like that, but if you can all of a sudden tell somebody, oh, we're gonna make your car a lot faster and you pay 25 bucks a month for that upgrade, I think a lot of people say, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and do that, okay? You know, things like self-driving vehicles, they're talking about making this a subscription model, and I don't know how much it's gonna cost. It could cost 100 bucks a month, could cost 200, could cost $300 a month, I don't know. But I can tell you there's plenty of Tesla owners that you know maybe didn't buy the self-driving feature when it came out, but I can tell you once they have full autonomous vehicles, there's gonna be plenty of Tesla drivers that would gladly pay a subscription uh, fee of some kind for a car that drives themselves all around, especially for people that do a lot of driving and would much rather do you know stuff on their phone or on their computer or something like that. I think a lot of folks will look at it as, man, that time that I spend driving, that's just time I could be making more money and things like that. So that's a whole thing. You know, they have obviously right now it's like 10 bucks a month or 12 bucks a month uh, to basically have like maps in your car, like satellite maps. I'm not talking about just regular maps, but satellite maps. And it looks amazing. I pay for the service. Okay. I think it's, I don't know, it's either 10 or 12 bucks a month or something like that. You also get streaming of music and other things included in that. That's a whole, that's a whole new wave. Okay. Insurance side of their business this is something they just started exploring in 2019. Imagine if all Teslas in the future or most Teslas in the future are insured by Tesla because they have the data behind basically what these cars, how fast they drive, how in control they drive. Do they have, are there, is it a human driving it or is it a car driving itself? All those sorts of things. Imagine the insurance side of their business, an app store. Keep in mind, a ton of developers would love to create very useful apps for the center consoles over time, especially if they get to a place where they're making millions of cars a year, which is very possible very soon. If they have some sort of app store, that's a whole other side of their business that will make them a ton of money. And just, you, I mean, that's just what we're talking about now. You know, in 2020, imagine what comes in 2022, 2024, 2026, 2028. Imagine how many different subscription models they'll have based upon their, their cars. 
massive opportunity, okay? Robo taxi network. Now this is this is Ark Invest. You guys know Ark Invest and Kathy Wood over there and whatnot. You know, they're big Tesla investors. And one of the most bullish things they are in regards to Tesla is the robo taxi network, which is basically, imagine Uber, but instead of Uber, it's like a Tesla comes and picks you up and it's got no driver in it. No driver in it, okay? Uh, that's a big, big possibility. I think Tesla, you know, you guys know I'm investing in Tesla and Uber, right? Personally, and I have a pretty good insight on both these companies, right? And I can tell you, it's gonna be it's gonna be a dogfight. I don't know who's gonna win it, but I can tell you the two main players in, in robo taxi networks, in my opinion, will be Uber and Tesla. I don't know who will win it, but I'm very very confident they'll be number one and number two in the world. And if Tesla wins that market, I mean you're just talking about a whole other kind of game changer there. Okay, not just that. Tesla's core of the company. The DNA of the company is all about disruption. So imagine all the things they're disrupting today as we look at the business model. And then add on top of that what's gonna happen over the next three years, five years, seven years. I mean, heck, they were talking about getting in the HVAC market on the conference call the other night because of all the game-changing technologies Tesla has when it comes to basically air quality control. And so just imagine how Tesla continues to disrupt markets after market, after market. So Mr. Warren Buffett, yes, I understand. Tesla my yesterday it seems expensive. The four P's very rich on it. I understand the company's just barely getting to profitability. I understand the company has historically taken losses. I understand, but the fact is at the end of the day, this is uh, you know, one of those uh you know, one of those very few companies we get that are just amazing and they're continuing to grow. And guess what, guys? When I first started looking into a stock named Amazing Zon, otherwise known as Amazon, ticker symbol AMZN, started looking at the stock back in like 2009, 2010 time frame, right? Stock was like a hundred something dollars back then. And I remember looking into it and saying, it's expensive. I remember looking at the PE, the Ford P, and it was like, dang, this is a very expensive stock. Very expensive. And the stock, you know what happened over the years? It just got more expensive. It just went up and 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 up. And today, Amazing is on stock is $2,315 a share. Think about that, huh? You know, I looked in the stock, it was expensive. It really did. On all valuation metrics, Amazon looked expensive back when it was $100, $200. And here it is, $2,000 plus, and it's still dang expensive, okay? It's an 85 forward P. But when it comes to Amazing Zon, it's just one of those companies like a Tesla Maesla where it's just like, it's it's changing industries and you know, what you think is expensive around the stock, it can't be, it can't be like, you shouldn't really compare it to just the average companies out there. You can't compare Tesla Maesla or Amazon stock to Coca-Cola or Pepsi. It's just, the, the, it's night and day, okay? It's apples and oranges, as they say. So, you know what, you know, I know Buffett would never probably ever buy Tesla stock, or, you know, at least not now, but, you know, I think it might be worthwhile, Mr. Buffett, okay? Stock number four to buy from Mr. Warren Buffett, in my opinion, is FB. I think, you know, this is one he could easily invest $6 billion into, not move the stock price. It's $205 here today. And in my opinion, it's the cheapest of the big tech companies. So you're looking at a forward P of 27.7. That's accounting for the fact that Roni Roan is going on. It's hurting ad rates just as it's hurting Google McDougal right now. But the fact is this company is the cheapest in big tech. And I think they have massive growth ahead when it comes to revenue and net income over the future years. Now, if you don't know the FB, it's not just, they don't just own the FB platform. Some people think that, they think, Oh, the FB, they just own FB, right? Nope, they also own WhatsApp, which I can tell you internationally, you know, Americans, not, you know, hardly any Americans use WhatsApp, but I can tell you around the rest of the world, WhatsApp is huge. I mean, absolutely huge. They own FB Messenger, they own Instagram, which is, is the, the, the social media that's just taking over the world now. It's got the world's attention. It's the most relevant uh, to businesses and it's most relevant to folks out there, especially, you know, uh, the, you know anybody in the age groups of, of about 18 to 58. That's the king there, okay? They have Oculus, which is virtual, virtual reality, and, and that's a, a very small business for them right now, but it is growing at a massive rate, and wait to see what, you know where things go over the next five to 10 years for them. At the end of the day, they have the whole world. The world uses, uh, you know, usually at least one of their services each and every day, and especially, and especially most of the developed world. Look at this number here. This is their latest quarter. This is, this is, this basically means that a person uses at least one of their platforms every day. 2.36 billion. 
Think about that. There's what, 7.7 billion people on earth and 2.36 billion of those people use at least one of their apps each and every day. And some people actually use all their apps. Some people have an FB, they have an IG, they're on WhatsApp, they're on FB Messenger, and they're using them all. And while some other people, like myself, you know, pretty much just use IG, okay? But that's just, it's just an unbelievable, unbelievable number, okay? You wanna see more unbelievable numbers? FB has plenty of them, okay? Net income, even with the Rony Rona definitely affecting things negatively in this quarter, you know, especially if you're talking about March, right? They still posted $4.9 billion in net income. That's an incredible business model. That's a truly incredible business model when you can put up that type of number, almost $5 billion in net income, and you had Rony Rona severely impact business, especially in, in the month of March, okay? You wanna talk about a moat around a business? Talk about FB, okay? Think about it, the biggest competitor FB had that was like, oh, could they come and take out the FB, right? That was Snap. Snap was their biggest competitor, and we know what happened with that story. You know, Snap just, you know, Snap is what it is. It's still a service, and you know, people definitely still use it, but their numbers compared to FB are so minuscule that they're just like a little minnow fish. But there was a, there was a moment there, you know, if you go back to like 2017, where Snap was growing so fast that it was like, maybe this could be the one that comes, and then IG started IG stories, and uh, you know, and Snap kind of made a few mistakes along the way, and that was just a game changer. And Snap was, you know, they, they tried, they, you know, they shot their shot, but uh, it just didn't go through. Then you had Vine that tried to compete, right? Vine ended up just disappearing, like Vine just went bye-bye, right? And then Vine Vine kind of restarted as this thing called TikTok, and TikTok's coming now. And who knows, you know, now it's going to be the hype of could TikTok come and replace, you know, IG and FB and all those sorts of things. You know, all I can say to that is, is good dang luck, okay? Good dang luck for TikTok coming to take out IG and FB, okay? That's like saying, you know, RC Cola is going to come take out Coke. Hey, everything's possible. Might be a little unrealistic. So the moat around FB's business model is incredible. Everybody wants what FB has. Everybody, Google's tried to compete in the space, couldn't do it. Everybody wants what FB has and they just can't get it. It's just too dang hard, okay? Look at the latest quarter when it comes to your balance sheet. Uh, you know, this is one of the best balance sheets in the world. Is it as good as Google McDougal's? Not quite there, but maybe someday it will be. $23.6 billion in cash and cash equivalents for the FB. Marketable securities, which basically means short-term investments of $36.6 billion. $36.6 billion. You add up those numbers there, and we're talking over $60 billion in cash and cash equivalents in short-term investments. Incredible, okay? And so at the end of the day, Mr. Warren Buffett, I say, do you like easy money? Because if you like easy money, Put six billion in Facebook stock and watch what happens to it over the next five years. That's all I get to say. If you like easy money, Mr. Buffett, do it. And I don't think this is a super hard business to understand in my personal opinion. I mean, you're talking about users that go onto these platforms each and every day. You're talking about an advertising business model that basically ads show up in the feeds that are the most relevant to those consumers. And, and at the end of the day, you know, the, the, we'll talk about regulation for the FB. <sighs> Good luck getting, you know, FB regulated now. The whole government's attention around the world's all on Rony Rona. So there's no regulation. And, and by the way, FB is acting as a good, like, little government partner in this whole deal, trying to give out as much information. So they're getting on the good side of government during this time. Uh, and, and, you know, the governments around the world are going to be focused on Rony Rona for years to go in the future. FB will be able to run wild. Do you like easy money, Warren Buffett? If you do, bad baby. Okay. Stock number five. I'll be honest. This is the most obvious as all. This is like you ever been looking for your phone and it's right in your hand, you know, one of those type of moments. You're looking for your glasses and they're on top of your head, something like that. You're like, oh, oh there they are. Okay. This is right in front of Warren Buffett's face. It's the most obvious of them all. I think you should buy $6 billion of Berkshire Hathaway. I think they should do a big buyback. And yes, they have authorized it, but they haven't been buying that many shares back. But I think Berkshire Hathaway, they need to buy back shares heavy. The stock's 177 bucks here today. They need to buy the back stock heavy. It's the lowest it's been in the past two years. Berkshire Hathaway stock has never been this low in the past two years. And at the end of the day, Warren Buffett understands Berkshire Hathaway more than any other company in the world, right? If you believe a lot in Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett, buy back the stock big, okay? You know, easily you could, you know, Berkshire Hathaway is worth like a, a half a trillion dollars. They could put six billion, they could buy back six billion dollars worth of the stock and it wouldn't be anything, okay? Remember, Berkshire Hathaway's biggest investment, do you guys know what it is? It's Apple stock. Apple stock it by, is by far in a way Berkshire Hathaway's biggest investment in the world, right? And who are the kings of buybacks? Apple. 
Apple stock, okay? I can tell you Apple's EPS wouldn't be anywhere remotely close to where it is if it wasn't for the fact that Apple's been buying shares back left and right for the past five years. They are the buyback kings, the by far and away, okay? And so it's clear Berkshire loves buybacks or you don't own Apple stock. And most of these companies that Berkshire's biggest investments in, they've all had big share buybacks, okay? It's very clear. So at the end of the day, Warren Buffett, buy your own dang stock back because it's the cheapest it's been in years. And uh, so anyways, I hope you guys really enjoy this. As always, don't forget the goal, 30 billion thumbs up for this. We just spent $30 billion of Warren Buffett's money. So now uh, we just need to hit 30 billion thumbs up. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. As always, let me know what stocks you guys think are buys out there or stocks you're just watching. I would love to hear from you guys in that comment section as always, all right? Thank you for watching and have a great day.